A hybrid Elantra that's actually available for sale? Crazy. So if you guys have been following the channel and have watched my 2023 Hyundai Elantra Limited Hybrid video, then you would recall that I thought the Limited Hybrid was a better value and a better deal than the regular Limited Elantra because of the few additions that they added specific for the Limited Hybrid trim. So today I have a 2023 Red Blue Elantra Hybrid, which is the only other hybrid available in the Elantra's lineup. Now the Blue Hybrid is based on the base SEL trim of the Elantra in its gasoline powered form, but does have a few additions that are found in the convenience package, which get here on the Blue Hybrid. Now for 2023, Hyundai did make changes in packaging across the Elantra lineup. This mainly occurred around the SEL as well as the SEL convenience trims. Now when discussing the Blue Hybrid in specific, it did get a small price increase, but not as much as some of the other trims in the Elantra lineup. It did receive a $300 price increase, which brings the base MSRP to $25,495, including destination. So with the same $2,700 price premium over the equivalent gasoline-powered Elantra, let's take a look and see if this hybrid blue offers the same value as the hybrid limited. So the Elantra in front of us is finished in the scarlet red pearl exterior color with the gray cloth interior. I believe I showed you this color combination on an SEL convenience trim Elantra a few months ago when we had it in inventory. Uh, but this is a very nice looking Elantra. I do like the contrast with the dark finished wheels that we'll get to here in a second. But the scarlet red pearl has a mild amount of metallic flake. It's definitely not overdone like some of the other colors on the market from various manufacturers. But the front end of the blue hybrid is going to be very similar, if not the same, as the base SEL, the SEL Convenience trims like that. So you do have a matte black finished grille with the chrome Hyundai emblem farther up on the front bumper. No fog lights or anything like that, but you do have air curtains to kind of direct air around the front end to help with better aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. You can see the vehicle is actually running. There's just a slight fan noise coming from the front end, but the engine itself is actually not running. Again, because this is a hybrid. So the daytime running lights are lit up. It has halogen projector headlights with incandescent turn signals on the corners of the grill there. So nice aggressive front end. I would like to see LED projector headlights that are found on the limited kind of trickle down into some of the lesser trims. I think that would be a nice upgrade. Coming to the wheels and tires, these are the 16 inch wheels found on the base SEL as well. They're riding on 205, 55, 16 inch Kumo Solus TA31 all season tires. And once again, the wheel themselves is kind of a dark gray finish. Looks very nice. I definitely like the contrast. Body color mirror caps, no turn signal indicators. These are going to be heated and do have blind spot detection. That is one of the differences, uh, the fact that the mirrors are heated over the base gasoline SEL. Proximity entry on both front door handles. This does not have Hyundai digital key capability, just the regular proximity entry. Out back is where you find another difference versus the base gasoline SEL. This one has the LED plus bulb tail lights, so it has an LED daytime running light tail light with incandescent brake lights, turn signals, and reverse lights. So that is one of the differences there. So only basically the uh, running light is going to be LED. Down below you have the regular kind of matte black plastic trim with kind of some aggressive accents on each corner. Backup camera is located in the top of the trunk with the trunk release button below the Hyundai emblem. There's the blue hybrid emblem on the right side of the tailgate. But yeah, this generation of Latra does look very nice. It is very kind of polarizing in terms of the design language, especially when it was released, uh, more aggressive in nature, but I do like it. I think it is going to age relatively well, especially compared to the 19 and 20 Elantras. So let's go ahead and take a look at the window sticker really quick so you guys know exactly how this one is equipped and then we'll dive into the interior. So like many Hyundai models, there's no really option packages on this particular trim. It basically comes with just a few accessories uh, that Hyundai chooses to put on each vehicle. But the main differences in terms of the options and features that this one has over the base SEL gas trim is the fact that this one has the electronic parking brake, heated front seats, heated side mirrors, and like I said, the LED plus bulb tail lights, uh, those are found all in the convenience package on the gasoline powered Elantra. So this particular vehicle does have a few additional accessories, which brings the total MSRP on this one to $25,910, including destination. So diving onto the interior, once again, this is the gray cloth interior, which personally I would prefer the black, but it's definitely an interesting color combo. Starting out here on the door panel, you have hard touch uppers, a nice soft cloth slash rubber, uh, accent trim along the middle section there. Padded armrest, not leather or anything, just kind of a rubberized plastic. We do have power windows, mirrors, and locks with automatic driver. Chrome door handle pull, 
with chrome tweeter trim up top and a little bit of additional storage down below. Six way manual driver seat with height adjustment. I do kind of like the accent in the middle that kind of breaks up the seat with kind of a silver and gold trim. You can immediately see we're greeted to kind of a unique gauge cluster design because this one does not have the 10.25 inch cluster uh, that's fully digital. That's kind of the analog cluster with the 4.2 inch color display on the right side. This was a similar one found in the end line before it was updated to the digital cluster. On the left, you can see we have the eco charge power monitor that kind of changes depending on the throttle and uh, what the engine is doing. You do have your battery level between high and low in the bars there. In the middle, obviously we have our speedometer with the fuel gauge kind of lower in the right corner. And then once again, on the right, you can control it here on the right side of the steering wheel, toggling through some of the menus. It does provide a lot of information, such as the energy flow to the battery in the engine, obviously your drive mode that you're in, digital speed readout if you would like it, your odometer, outside temp, fuel range, trip information, all that good stuff. So it is a very nice cluster. Regular urethane steering wheel, so no leather wrapped. Does have some silver accent trim with your gloss black buttons. So here on the left side, you have your audio and infotainment. On the right side, you have your safety system. This does have lane following assist, but does not have smart cruise control. So this is not a trim that has the adaptive cruise uh, as standard. So that is a little bit unfortunate, uh, but you do get that in the SL convenience package on the gas Elantras. Automatic headlights with auto high beam assist, regular wipers. To the left of the steering wheel, you have your gauge illumination, your 12 volt battery reset. I don't think this is a very common feature in uh, many other makes and models of hybrids. So it's nice to see that Hyundai does include that. Lane keeping assist on off, as well as your traction control on off. And one thing I noticed immediately stepping in is that there's no more kind of plastic with the circle here. Mostly hard touch dash panel here with a kind of a unique pattern or texture on it. But moving over to the infotainment, this is the base eight inch infotainment. This does have blue link connectivity. So you can use the app on your phone to remote start and control the vehicle. And because this is the eight inch screen, it does have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. This one does have XM capability as well. You do have unique hybrid pages so you can control and view some of the energy flow settings. So your average MPG as well as the electronic motor use. I do like the hard touch buttons on either side of the screen. You can program the star button uh, both up here as well as on the steering wheel to uh, be a specific shortcut of your choosing. And once again, volume, two knobs. Very easy to use infotainment. And I think a lot of people do appreciate that it does include wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Some unique vent design that goes all the way across the dashboard there. Dual zone automatic climate control, so that's nice. Then you have the heated front seats, which once again are not found on the base SEL, uh, but are part of the SEL convenience package. You do get them here on the blue hybrid. Urethane shift knob. Drive mode select up here, you have sport, normal, and smart modes. Can pull up your rear backing camera if you would like. Electronic parking brake with auto hold next to the shifter. Once again, this is found in the convenience package of the base gas Elantra. And here is just a little note on the dual clutch transmission. This does have a six speed dual clutch transmission. Gloss black trim that kind of runs across the center console around the cup holders here. Here's the proximity entry for this vehicle. It does have remote start built in the key fob and is the proximity key fob that Hyundai's been using the last few years on some of their uh, vehicles. So nice to see that. Coming back to the center armrest, kind of a rubberized padded material similar to the armrest on the door. Opening it up, you'll find a good amount of storage, not overly large or anything. Uh, no light or inputs in there, just a nice storage place. Up top, you will find a soft kind of medium gray headliner with vanity lighting. Manual dimming, rear view mirror with more incandescent interior lighting, blue link SOS buttons up top. Note that you do not get a sunglasses holder or anything like that. There are very few Hyundai models uh, coming out that do have sunglasses holders. I think the Kona might be one of the only ones, but that is missing from most new Hyundai vehicles and no sunroof in this particular trim. That's something you'll have to step up to the limited or limited hybrid to get. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rear seat, see what the hybrid has to offer. So once again, with this generation of the Elantra, the compact sedan has grown in size quite a bit, pushing of what the midsize used to be. But out back material wise, you'll find a pretty much hard touch door panel with just the similar 
uh, rubberized kind of cloth material around the door handle pole there, but otherwise hard touch armrest. Seat material will fall through with the same accent in the middle. And stepping inside, it is going to be a slightly lower vehicle once again than the SUVs I've been used to doing videos on. But there's a look at the front dashboard. No AC vents, no USB charge ports, uh, no mat pockets on the backs of the seats even. So this is pretty bare bones uh, as, as far as it gets in the Elantra lineup. No center armrest either, and this is a bench folding seat design, so the whole rear seat has to fold down as one piece. There's no 60-40 split, uh, so that is a small drawback as well. But in terms of interior volume and the seat comfort, the seats are nice. The material is softer than some of the other Hyundai models I've been in with cloth, and legroom is more than adequate in this type of vehicle. Once again, I have at least five inches behind my rough driving position. But take a look at the trunk space. Good amount of storage in the back for a compact class vehicle. But up top, you will find the poles for the bench folding seats on either side. You do have to pull those simultaneously to fold the seat down. And there is a little light up top here to help illuminate at night. But otherwise, very basic uh, trunk space here. Does have a compact spare with the roadside tools underneath the floor. I know that's a big deal for some people and it does have the compact spare. But yeah, that's it as far as the trunk space goes. Take a look at the passenger seat. Four-way manual passenger seat, so no height adjustment. Rubberized dash with that texture once again. Non-damped glove box, no lighting in there that I can see. A little bit of additional storage on the side of the console. But yeah, that's it as far as the interior of the blue hybrid goes. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood, see what powertrain this has, and wrap it up. So under the hood, you'll immediately be greeted to the high voltage wiring for the hybrid system. This is paired to a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine, six speed dual clutch transmission, and the engine and electric motor combined puts out 139 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque through only the front wheels. A nice combined output. It is slightly lower in horsepower than the two liter naturally aspirated engine found in the gas Elantras, but much more torque provided by the electrification. So like I mentioned in the introduction of this video, this hybrid powertrain is a $2,700 price premium over the uh, base or respective base gasoline powered Elantra trim level that's based upon. And in the limited version of the hybrid, I think it offers uh, many unique aspects such as the ventilated front seats that you simply cannot get in the regular Elantra lineup at all. Now here in this trim level, sure you do get a couple benefits, but you can step up to an SEL convenience trim to get all those in the regular gasoline powered Elantra. So basically there's no exclusive features found on this trim of the hybrid Elantra like there is on the limited hybrid. So when you start to look at the SEL convenience Elantra and then compare it to the blue hybrid, uh, obviously you're gonna get all of the features that this blue hybrid has, but you're also gonna gain like things like adaptive cruise control, the 10.25 inch cluster, as well as the 10.25 inch infotainment with built-in navigation, uh, 17 inch alloy wheels, and a couple other things on the interior as well. So you are gaining features over this blue hybrid, and they come out to be roughly the same price point in MSRP, I do believe maybe within a couple hundred dollars of each other on the $25,000 price range. Uh, so when you start to compare the two, then the main benefit of the blue hybrid becomes the uh, drivetrain itself. So the main benefits of the hybrid drivetrain are obviously gonna be a little bit better MPG. I've seen some crazy figures come out of the gas regular Elantra according to some people online, uh, but the hybrid versions of the Elantra are gonna gain the multi-link independent rear suspension, which personally I think is a huge upgrade over the torsion beam found in the uh, regular gas versions. The end line also gets the multi-link. I just think that uh, enhances the performance. It should be a little bit different of a ride, a little bit better improved ride over rough roads. But I think that is a nice upgrade as part of the hybrids, along with the much greater torque uh, from the combined output from the engine as well as the electric motor. Uh, 195 is the same rating as the end line with the 1.6 liter turbo and a huge upgrade. I think it's a little over 50 pound feet of torque versus the regular gasoline powered Elantra. So those are the big benefits I see of the hybrid powertrain. Uh, so in terms of the features and options, maybe not a huge benefit there, but in terms of the powertrain drivetrain itself, 
I think there is a benefit. So if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit that like button. It greatly helps out these videos. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications so you guys are notified every time I post and check out some of the other content I have. I have Hyundai videos, GMC, Chevy, and Buick walk-arounds, um, and a bunch of other how-tos and just automobile-related content in general. So with all that being said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.